This is the Trigonometric Translations Tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be dealing with translations involving sine and cosine functions. Now, if you recall, the parent function of a sine function is simply y is equal to sine x. When we deal with transformations of sine functions, it looks like y is equal to a times the sine of b times the quantity x minus h plus k where the absolute value of a is the amplitude which affects the shrink and stretch of a graph. And 2 pi over b is the period, where b must always be greater than 0 and x must be in radians. Now the h and k are pretty interesting. The h is the phase shift which moves the graph left and right, and the k is the vertical shift which moves the graph up and down. Now that same set of transformations applies to the parent function of y is equal to cosine of x. The transformation of y is equal to cosine of x looks like y is equal to a times cosine b of the quantity x minus h plus k. And again, those values of a, b, h, and k apply, the same as they did for the sine functions. So the easiest way to work with these in a tutorial is to go through some practice problems and take a look at transformations and sine and cosine functions. So what I'd like you to do is graph each of the following translations of y equals sine x and the interval from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. And I'm going to walk you through these first two transformations. I'll begin by bringing in the graph of the first translation. And I'll show you how we drew this graph. Now let's pay attention to the information provided for us here. The a value, the b value, the h and k. Our a value occurs right here before the sine. So in this case, our a has a value of 2. Our b would occur right before this transformation, x minus 4. Since you don't see anything there, our b value must be 1. Now our h value is always the opposite of what's going on here, because it's x minus h. So if we have x minus 4, h must be 4. It's the opposite of whatever sign is in there with that x. And our k is just added on to the end. So in this case we have plus 2, which means our k has a value of 2. So what you notice here is that our h has a value of 4, which means we're going to shift our graph to the right four units. We go to the right because on your standard coordinate plane going to the right is a positive direction and we have a positive four which means we go to the right four units. And you'll also notice that our k value is two so we would go up two units. Now if you were to plot the standard parent function of a sine function y equals sine x what you'd notice is that your sine function always comes into your graph at the origin going up. And since we still have that positive sine value, so going up as it enters, our graph should look like that model. Now normally, our sine function comes in right at the origin. However, our graph has been shifted four units to the right and two units up. So if I went four units to the right and two units up, this would now be where our graph comes into play. That's where the origin was translated to that point, four units to the right, and two units up. Now notice that a typical sine function goes one unit up and one unit down. However, the amplitude of our translated sine function is two. So we're going to go two units up from that origin now. So if you went two units up, you'd peak right here. And if you went two units down from that origin, you'd peak right down there on the bottom. That would be the trough of your graph. And you notice that that blue sine function that we've drawn in behaves that same way. So we're imagining that that blue sine function isn't drawn in yet, and you guys are drawing it in for the first time. So we've calculated where our origin is, and we've calculated what the maximum and minimum values are based on the amplitude. Now take a look at the period. The period is 2 pi over b. And our b value is 1, which means our period is simply 2 pi. 2 times pi, if we use 3.14 as the rough value of pi, 2 times that is 6.28 which means that a cycle occurs on our graph for every 6.28 units on our x-axis. So if we went 4 to the right of our origin, 
I could go 4 units back this way. And I want to go a total of 6.28 units before I complete one cycle. So I'm going to go back 2.28 more units. Well, 2 to the left of the origin occurs right here. And I want to go a little bit past that, 2.28 units past. So I'm going to go right there. So now I've drawn where my cycle is going to occur. From this point here, 6.28 units to this point right here, because that's our period, 2 pi. And I know that for every half of that, so for every 1 pi, the y-coordinate of our graph is going to be equivalent to what it was where we started. So if I went 3.14 units from the left of that original point that we calculated here, I could draw a point right there. And I know that our graph is going to be passing back through that point as it comes into play. So if you start from where our origin was at 4 units to the right and 2 units up, you know that our graph should be coming upward as it passes through that origin because that's what a standard sine function does. So we must be going down here until we get two units down because the amplitude of our function is two. And we want to go up in such a way that we hit that point at pi units back. So that distance here is pi units back from where we started. Then we want to go up an amplitude of two and back down, and we want to be back down to this point when we've gone another pi horizontal units from where we started. So if you add those two together, we've gone two pi units now, which is the cycle for our particular function here. So that's how this line gets drawn in. You start by drawing in the points that you know, the amplitude that you know that your graph has, and then you just draw in a gentle curve to follow that to hit those points right as you drew them in. Let's do the same thing for the function on the right. This function is y is equal to 1 half sine of x plus pi over 2 minus 3. I'm going to go ahead and draw the graph in for you and we can get started. Now let's begin by looking at our translation, our h and k. Remember that your h value is the opposite sign of whatever this value is here. So our h is going to be negative pi over 2. And our k value is going to be this value right here, which is negative 3. Again, our a is simply the value before the sign. So in this case, our a is 1 half. And our b value is the coefficient after the sign but before that parenthesis set there. So in this case, because you don't see anything, our coefficient must be 1, so our b is 1. So again, let's start with our k value, which is negative 3. So I'm going to go down to negative 3, and I'm going to draw a horizontal line connecting it to our graph. Now, our h value is negative pi over 2. And pi over 2 is roughly 1.57. So I'm going to go 1.57 units to the right, and to the left of our y-axis, and that's where we should bump into our graph. So if I drew a line over here on the left side of the graph going straight up, it would look like this. And you'll notice that that point right there on the graph is almost to the negative 2. It's one, negative 1 1.6, roughly, and negative 3 on our y-axis. So we know that our graph has an amplitude of 1 half. So if I were to go one half unit up from negative 3 to negative 1.5, our graph would plateau there. And if I were to go one half unit down from negative 3 to negative 3.5, our graph would plateau down here on the bottom as well. So we know that our graph is going to be going up and down to meet those points, negative 2.5 and negative 3.5. I'm going to go ahead and write in our value up here of negative 1.57. That's that line going straight down. Now remember, each cycle in our graph is going to be occurring at 2 pi over b units. And since b is 1, every 2 pi units is going to be the completion of one cycle. 2 pi is again, like we said, roughly 6.28, and every pi unit is 3.14. So if I were going to go 3.14 units to the left of that point on our graph, 
I would arrive right about here. Now if you subtract 3.14, so pi units, from negative 1.57, you get roughly negative 4.7, which is about right there. And negative 4.7, if you go straight down, is where we intersect our graph again. Now go pi units to the right of that negative 1.57, where we began. So if you add 3.14 to negative 1.57, you get roughly 1.57. So if you went 1.57 units to the right of that line, you'd intersect our graph again. So we've got this point on the left, the origin of where we started, and this last point here on the right. And remember, that creates one cycle of our graph. So if we went down here, we'd arrive down at where we base out, one half units down from three where we started. And we'd go back up, past that point where we started, until we peaked out half a unit up. And that peak, you'll notice, occurs halfway between where we started there at negative 1.57 comma negative three and negative, or excuse me, positive 1.57 comma three. So we peak out halfway up there and we come back down. And that's one cycle of our graph. So that's how you would draw it in. You have to get those points going along in the beginning and then draw in your graph to meet it. Now these problems take a little confidence and the only way you're gonna get that confidence is by doing them over and over. Find more and more problems to do until you're sure that when you're drawing these graphs in before they actually exist here on the graph paper that you're drawing it in correctly. Now let's take a look at another problem. In this problem, I'd like you to describe the phase shift and vertical shift in the graph. Well, remember that this is going to be our h value and this is going to be our k. So our h value for this graph is the opposite of negative pi, which is positive pi. And our k value is positive 2. So our graph is going to shift pi units to the right and 2 units up from your standard parent function. And you'll also notice that the amplitude of this function is four, which means our graph is gonna go four units up from its new origin and four units down from its new origin. And our new origin starts at pi units to the right and two units up. So our graph is gonna look like this. Notice that when we start our curve over here, pi units to the right, so 3.14 units to the right and two units up. So if you go two units up, where you hit right here is roughly the midpoint of this curvature upward. And remember, we're dealing with the cosine. So that's exactly where it should be because as the standard cosine parent function enters the origin of your graph, it's usually peaked out. So we have a good shift here. So now let's go ahead and take a look at another problem. In this problem, I'd like you to graph the following function in the interval from negative two pi to two pi. And the function is y is equal to 1 fourth sine 2x plus 2. Now that x can just as easily replace theta. So let's take a look at what we've got here. I know that 1 fourth is our a value. So I'll write that over here. a is equal to 1 fourth. And our b value occurs right after our sine. So our b value is 2. Now our h is typically wrapped up with our x there in parentheses, and since there's nothing there, our h must be zero, and our k value comes at the end, so our k value must be two for this problem. So let's look at the period of our function. Our period is two pi over b, and our b value is two. So that means that the period of our function is pi. So one cycle is gonna occur for every pi units. And since we're going from negative two pi to two pi, we're going a total horizontal distance of four pi units. So we should see four cycles of our graph here. Now remember, your typical sine function comes through the origin right at zero, zero, as it's traveling upward. But we've been shifted zero units to the left and right and two units up. So when our graph comes in here, it should come in right at that value, two. And remember, our amplitude is one-fourth. One-fourth is roughly 0 0.25. So if you went 0 0.25 units up from two, 
you'd get to 2.25. And if you went 0.25 units down from 2, you'd get to 1.75. So here we have the amplitude of our function. So I'm going to mark a point where I know that our function would start. I know that it would come through the origin right here on its way up because our origin has been shifted two units vertically. I also know that the cycle is going to repeat itself every pi units, so every 3.14 units. So I could go 3.14 units to the right and mark another point and know that our cycle is going to repeat itself over this distance. Now I know that halfway through that distance I'm going to be coming back down from where I peaked. So I'll put a point halfway through that distance. Now I also know that when I peak, I'm going to peak 0.25 units above 2, so at 2.25. And that peak is going to occur one halfway between these two points right here. So I could draw a line going up, peaking there halfway from that first point to this point that I just connected with. And I know that I'm going to bottom out here halfway between the point I just left and the last point here, pi units from where I started. So this green line represents one cycle. Now remember, the period of each of our cycle is pi units and we're going from negative 2 pi to 2 pi which means we're going to have four of these cycles. And you see that we've got four peaks here. So that's how you're going to graph this function in the interval from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. Now again, continue to work with these sine and cosine translations because it takes a little while to get used to all the different translations and remembering how sine functions enter the typical graph and how cosine functions enter the typical graph. You're just going to have to practice with these guys to really get good with them.